Can you hear me, guys? Yes. Excellent. Sorry for the delay. Um, it's a lot of lights here, so I can't see all of you guys here. So, but uh, I will try to address each and every one of you guys. Um, to begin with, um, I'm Masoud Jain. I've been an e-commerce and agile consultant for quite a few retailers in the last 10 years. Uh, I've begun with working with Screwfix, one of the DIY retailers, uh, moving on to Tesco, and now working for uh, the B&Q via uh, the KITS. KITS stands for Kingfisher IT Services. Um, they've been uh, working on uh, providing the services for uh, the B&Q website and all the other applications uh, that uh, they host on their centers. So I've worked with uh, the kids uh, uh, for a few years and trying to get their um, systems uh, to, uh, to be working with uh, Jenkins and, and continuously um, integrated with, with, uh, with the platforms. Uh, basically, I'm uh, a, a developer uh, by day job, and I, I design website uh, and in-store applications and contact center applications. But I've, over the experience, I've realized that being just a developer isn't uh, good enough uh, in order to see your code through uh, to, to, to the environment, uh, to the production. So you have to step up a bit uh, and work on other aspects, uh, which is out of your comfort zone, um, whether it's testing or, or, or configuration or environments configuration, deployments, and, and communicating with, with people and business. So there's quite a few areas we have to uh, think about. So we've been working on that. I've uh, been working on training the, the development team in order to achieve uh, certain practices, certain agile practices. So what I'll talk today, I, mean, I wouldn't talk too much of, of the evangelism, but more of the, what we've practiced, what we have achieved in, in kits uh, in order to deliver continuously. So first of all, I'll go through the systems we are building uh, in, in uh, the DIY.com and TradePoint applications, uh, and how we are continuously deploying or continuously uh, delivering new releases uh, uh, based on um, uh, proper uh, dev environments uh, uh, with proper rigorous dev process uh, and integrated with the, the continuous integration using Jenkins uh, and with, with Jenkins uh, build pipelines. We have uh, uh, build and release pipelines being uh, configured in a way to, to, to take your, you know, your code to higher environments. I'll touch upon the automated testing we've been doing uh, to get a release uh, uh, through, uh, through the gates, um, and a little bit of branching strategy which we've implemented, which is, uh, helps us uh, achieve uh, um, you know, a code in one, uh, one branch, but in delivering, which is a basic principle of uh, CD, and also touch upon future goals of cloud computing, uh, how we can deliver uh, or deploy code to clouds uh, to uh, to enable continuous delivery as well. So, uh, as you can see, we, we've got uh, continuous delivery uh, delivery in red, which means it's not there yet. We have enabled it. We have got a framework where we can continuously deliver something, uh, but we still have uh, challenges in the infrastructure point of view, and how we can achieve that is, is one of the future goals. So quickly going through the systems we are developing, uh, I've categorized that into a couple of sections. Uh, uh, the front, uh, front end uh, consists of the front office and the back office applications. Uh, we are consistently do, uh, building and deploying via Jenkins. Uh, it's got the databases as well. And, and the back end system is, is the broker and, and auto management system, which is uh, SAP. Uh, we are not there yet into uh, getting our Jenkins hand in there yet. So that's one of our future plans. But the front end, which is being built on ATG uh, platform, it's an Oracle uh, product for e-commerce engine. Uh, we've got uh, the DIY.com, a trade point, uh, a customer service application, and an in-store application being developed. Uh, all that is being developed in the ATG platform, and some back office applications like the BCC is a business control center where business can uh, and do changes to the, uh, the front end without a need of a dev process, 
and then we have fulfillment, uh, will, will all the orders captured are, are, are processed and, and, and sent across the downstream. So I wouldn't go into detail, but you get the picture. This is what we're trying to build and deploy. So please keep this in mind when we, we're talking about the build pipelines and, and releases. So in order to get this uh, you know, uh, continuously delivered, uh, we, we can't just apply a tool and say we can uh, deliver continuously until we have that mindset change within the dev community. Uh, so what we got is, is a scaled-down version of this, this environment into a, a virtual machine uh, where the developers can try out and build and deploy all the tools, uh, using all the tools we use for, for you know, continuous integration and, and deployment and testing into one uh, logical section where the developers can do everything they want. So this VM consists of I would say the front office, the back office, and, and, and stops at, the, at, the, at the, the broker level where, where it's being mocked. So we don't want to uh, have SAP and, and broker into the VMs yet. So this VM consists of uh, the, our, our main application. Uh, we got a, a Jenkins as well, as well installed in there where, where developers can easily use whatever um, jobs we've got for, for the main release uh, to, to be using that. And, and fitness also is installed. Fitness is one of the automated uh, framework uh, testing we used. And I'll talk about that uh, in, in coming slides. And it's got the DB as well. So it's, it's one full package of an environment where it can be, you know, developers and even testers can use it to build and deploy applications and, and test them before actually checking in the code. So this is like an inception stage when developers uh, begin their, 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 their project. So when they start their process, we give them a handout which talks about exactly what they need to do during, during their day of, 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 of uh, developer work. Uh, I wouldn't go any detail. I would just highlight the, the importance of, of having Jenkins or, or the, country, the CI aspect of it. So as soon as a developer starts working on, uh, he gets, before doing anything, he looks at the CI. Is the CI green? Is Jenkins green for us today? If it's got red, I'm not going to check out any code or, or pull any code until that is green. So they will wait until it's green and pull the code and do all the branching stuff they're doing, the feature branching, do the feature work, run, build all the tests, uh, which we saw in the VM, you know, with all the capabilities there, they will build and uh, run all the tests. Once they're finished with their uh, feature, they will again have a look at the CI. Is it still green yet? Is it still... Uh, the code is still clean, so they will have, a, have that uh, mentality in that they need to make sure keep looking at that. So once it's green, they'll, they're ready to push in. They push the code in and, and watch. Watch the CI go green or red again because it's their responsibility to make sure the CI is still green. If it's green, it's great. If it's red, you've got to go back to the drawing board or repeat this loop again. So. What we got in continuous integration is uh, to follow up that process is uh, we got various uh, builds strategies. Um, if you remember those the diagrams of multiple applications we've been building and deploying, it, it's a massive e-commerce application, and and in order to build and deploy, it, it's it's taking a lot of time. So we can't we can't bring that build, oh, sorry, the deployment aspect of it during the commit stage. So the commit stage is something we need a quick feedback. As soon as the developer finishes work, uh, pushes the code in, we need a quick feedback. So that's uh, within five minutes or 10 minutes, or as soon as whenever uh, they are, the, the check-ins go uh, green and run various uh, unit tests, uh, they'll get quick, quick feedback. So uh, that's one uh, strategy. And we got hourly builds, and we got daily builds, and, and release builds. I'll go that in detail. So the commit builds, as I just uh, explained, uh, you can see the loop. Uh, it follows the same workflow. Uh, we got a job which will um, come, you know, pull git for, for the, any changes, pull out uh, the code, compiles it, runs just the J units, and does all the static analysis, uh, PMD checks, do um, M code coverage, and uh, that's it. Uh, no functional tests are being run at this point of time. 
be, because we're not deploying any application because of the complexity of the of, uh, of the uh, the application we 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 get a quick uh, feedback and we get a lots of reports in that stage so we got the unit testing report uh, talking about which test pass which test failure and we got duplicate code um, coverage we got the MR code coverage, which covers the J unit uh, uh, the test coverage. So we got all various thresholds configured in in Jenkins. You all the Jenkins uh, quite a few plugins provide that uh, where if it breaches that threshold, you know we can we can fail that build. So the build doesn't progress uh, if one of these thresholds have been uh, breached. So if everything is fine, uh, we have a monitor. Uh, build monitor, which is kind of visible everywhere in, in the dev environments, uh, in, 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 in the halls, uh, where it, it shows the critical builds. Uh, here are some of the examples where we have built uh, certain projects, deployment, of, uh, deployment jobs. Uh, any of those jobs fail, uh, this is going to be a red. And if not, all will be green. If it's red, it will look like something like this. It, it gives you a big red and people react to it as soon as they see this annoying red and and not only just the developer even the managers react to it and say you know something's not right you know we got to fix this and we got uh, people you know working on it immediately to in order to get this fixed so that way we get a quick feedback and we kind of have a a, a flow of an on commit check in making sure they are uh, still clean but and, and regularly what we do now then is, is take that build and, and deploy it to a, a CI environment. So we got a pipeline uh, to do that. We've orchestrated a pipeline using the uh, build pipeline plugin and, and decided that we will probably do it every two hours. Uh, I will explain why uh, it takes two hours. Uh, and and, and either, either it be on demand or, or on check-in. So this plugin provides that uh, capability. So we divided various jobs, like the build job, which obviously gets the, um, the code from the git and, and shows us the git commit, and then compiles it, runs JUnits, and runs all those reports again. And, 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 and that stage, if, it, if that stage fails, that goes red. That, that box goes red, and none of the other downstream uh, projects uh, will, will trigger until that's fixed. So we can see we're building the application. The next stage is assembling uh, to analysis, uh, analyzing the, the, uh, the static analysis. And then next bit is the assembling, the packaging bit. You know, we got massive year files. Uh, ATG application works on ER files. So we got around seven to eight uh, enterprise uh, ER files being created and packaged. And then the next logical uh, job is to deploy, deploy to a CI environment, so it, that job then you know, feeds to the next job, saying that oh, this I have this package is now ready uh, and deployed to the CI environment. So this job then uh, deploys to the CI environment and followed by uh, testing. So so you can see the, the 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 core principles of CDs being being you know you know visualized here is, is build, uh, analyze, deploy, and test. And then and, 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 and it go to the create that release. So once the test job is successful, we take we we we, we you know, store that release permanently. So it's it, it's uploaded into Nexus. So all that has been configured behind the scenes. Uh, all these jobs is is like an orchestration of jobs, and they call other jobs in in uh, in, in in the in the in the back end. So we can see. Uh, uh, we have a kind of a, a, a schedule build every two hours, and uh, followed by a daily cut. Uh, once we have this constant uh, releases being created throughout the day, it's constantly being tested by uh, the test jobs. Uh, end of the day, we'll decide that okay, this job, this release is now good to go to the higher environments uh, because it's automatically tested. Uh, and then we can, uh, once we, the release gets tagged, it, it, it creates a uh, release note automatically as well. It goes to the GitHub and picks up all the changes all the developers have done uh, and compares with the last uh, release taken, last tagged job, and, and creates a draft 
release node, and then, then they uh, get packaged into, uh, into the deployable artifact as well. So once the tag is done, release nodes are done, so that release can now be you know, moved forward. So we have a chain job which will say, okay, deploy to a QA environment where where the well, QA team, or which is, should be a part of the dev team as well, would want to do some manual testing, which they haven't yet covered in the automation suit yet. So they would want to do some a sanity test or exploratory test. So we deploy to that environment. We also have a small suit uh, to actually uh, smoke test that environment as well. So, it, so the, the pipeline continues uh, to, to ver verify that environment as well. So this kind of is, is an iterative process with keeps going on and on and on. And then we, when the QA then authorizes that, that job, they, okay, that QA environment is good, that release is good, then we take it to the higher environments probably, which is more integrated to SAP, more integrated to broker, to do more high level integration testing, which probably can happen within a week or so. Uh, I see it's the same pipeline being continued throughout. And then they will realize uh, what's the state of the QA environment? Is it good? Is that really is good over there? Can we take it forward? And we, we send emails, not uh, emails to the appropriate stakeholders saying that this re release is now uh, capable of going to the higher environments. So they deploy to, uh, a, for example, an UATX environment, which is more integrated, a user acceptance testing environment, uh, system testing environment. You can had, have n number of environments and you can just plug in the appropriate jobs into there. So once it's gone to an integrated environment and they decide that, okay, this, ready, this release has got a good feature, uh, it's got considerable feature, we can take it, and the business decides that it's good to go, then there's a job which actually says promote to production. So what that job does is just marks that release as production ready. And uh, that, uh, the production deployment team will, will, will have that release in their area, so they can just take it forward depending on uh, whenever the chain next change is. So this, we've, we've extended a lot of this, uh, this, this build view um, uh, plugin and actually brought uh, a view where it shows which environment has what release. So this is very helpful for release managers to, to verify and, and, and send and, and understand which environment has got what release. And, when, and this we've extended this one to have a hyperlink on it, which when you click on it, will open up uh, a page in the Nexus which we upload our deployable artifacts. Yeah, uh, and you can see this, this particular JAR file is around four gig. So it consists of all the year files, all the database changes, all the environment configuration, and also it's got release nodes. So, Anybody can just take this and deploy to any environment. And so they don't, they don't have to go back and build anything else. So they just have to use this jar file, feed into a deployment system, and that deployment system will, will, will deploy to any environment. That leads us to this deployment in, uh, service was, which was developed in-house uh, because we had a team who, who were really uh, doing a lot of manual deployments. And, and we would wanted them to address the problem. So they, instead of going out and, and getting off-the-shelf products, uh, we invested it in the team itself to, to, to write up some simple shell scripts, which will probably copy files, uh, install uh, uh, the application, the ATG or JBoss or, or a, whatever application or whatever software that need to run that application. They all wrote that together as a team and then they came up with this deployment service, which will take the deployable, deployable package and, and, and progress it to the other environments. So we have uh, the same deployment service deploying for non-production environment, same deployment service deploying for production environment as well. So this deployment service holds anything to do with the environment, everything that moves in that environment, anything that changes in the environment into the source control. So we have the startup scripts, the deployment script, the shutdown script, uh, J the image creation script, JBoss creation script. Uh, it's uh, developed in simple shell scripts. 
uh, we got a um, very easy to use uh, config generator for an environment. And if a new environment pops in, we go to configure the environment variables, like uh, which JMS is going to connect to, which web service is going to connect to, uh, what are the endpoints, what are the ports, and all that. Everything is, is separated out from the main dev uh, code. So it also has, it's, it's, it's treated as a code. It has its own Git repository, but they go in hand in hand. So, so the developers are not too worried about that at, at a development stage, but they would know uh, a view that there is this repository they need to be updating. If they add a new component that requires a new environment variable, uh, they would be you know, communicating with this repository. So basically, the repository generator looks like this, the environment config generator. It's very simple. Any support guys can easily look at it. OK, my storefront needs uh, to be deployed to a new environment. What are the ports? What are the configurations? What are the endpoints? So that list continues. And there's a macro behind it. When you just click on it, it, it generates a deployable artifact of configurations uh, for that environment. So they just check that into the source code. And uh, that will be a part of the deployment package. Moving on swiftly towards non-production deployment, uh, we got a job which is uh, a common job for all deployment jobs. You can see that we have a job deploy apps almost run 20,000 times. But at, uh, as I checked today, it's almost 30,000 now. It's 30,000 times we've run the same job for, for, for any environments. So we just have to have a wrapper job saying that deploy to SQA or deploy to X or deploy to B and, and orchestrate that into one uh, by feeding in the appropriate parameters. So that job, what it does is it does everything. It stops the environment takes the database restore point, uh, update, gets the release from the Nexus because we are providing which release we are going to deploy. It applies the uh, ATG application changes, deploys all the configuration that needs for that environment, JBoss, whatever, starts the application, and that's all that responsibility is. So this then followed by the, with the testing aspect. So just going to go through a in detail of the job. Uh, if you look at one of the deploy to QAM job, uh, we have extended choice parameter which uh, plugin which holds a properties of uh, releases that have been created. So the job which tags the release, uh, tags it into the GitHub as well as updates this property file saying that this is the release being created. So that becomes the parameter of this job. And next we have Prepare release from Nexus is a downstream project, uh, is, is a project that gets triggered uh, before any other job. So it, it downloads the release from the Nexus by passing the parameter uh, from that property file, uh, gets the release, prepares the deployment server with, with that deployable artifacts, uh, and the logical structure happens. It stops the environment. We got a common job to stop and start. So we, we call it by passing the parameters as stop and stop. We got a job which updates the database. We know what the deployable artifact also consists of database changes. We deploy the artifact uh, database changes using that job. And then we have a common job to deploy to an environment. So that job, you can see um, uh, deploy apps job is called. We've seen in the, one of the pictures it's running in parallel. So you can see we have triggering in one trigger, we have multiple triggers, uh, which have enabled us to do parallel deployments in this version of Jenkins. Uh, the new version of Jenkins is slightly different um, and the way the parallelism has been achieved. So we haven't yet upgraded to the new version uh, because we st when, we, when we upgraded it, this all didn't work, all started working serially. So, so we're still not yet ready to upgrade to the new Jenkins yet. So this provides us a parallel activity in this version of Jenkins. You can see only one build trigger. Within there, we have multiple triggers. That gives us multiple uh, jobs running in parallel. So that's the job where, uh, which is being used for all environments, uh, whether it's, uh, except for production, obviously. Uh, everything else is, is like bring it down the environment, update the changes, bring it back up, run test. Uh, if it's all, all green, notify. 
all good. Coming to production deployments now is, is a different ball game here. Um, all, all the jobs we've seen here is, is, is full outage. You know, you, you have to bring down the entire environment, apply the changes, and bring back the environments. So we can't do that for, for production. We, we could do that for, for you know, you know, cutovers, where we, we have a downtime of probably a couple of days, and, and we're doing the re revamping systems. We could do that. But when the system, when the DIY.com or, or any retail website is up and running, we can't just go and bring down the website if we have a new release. Uh, that's not going to be a good customer experience. So let me go through, before I go to the other, other, out, other pipelines, I'm just going to talk about this outage pipeline we've uh, kind of orchestrated. Uh, once we decide that we have to have a major release, we have to get down the website down, it, it depends on the release. If release has got tremendous database changes, which can't be, you know, uh, it, it needs to be uh, uh, bringing down the website, then it's up to the business to decide that. So if they even decide that, this is the pipeline they will, they will follow. So we have a task, uh, we have a job in uh, Jenkins saying that prepare for outage uh, uh, deployments. What that job is just a, a manual check to see what's the uh, website, or what's, what, what, how many customers are there? Uh, is, is the customer still active? Uh, can put up the maintenance page, uh, have drain out the sessions uh, for the customers, um, stop all the backend systems, all, all the manual activities uh, which are still existing behind the scene. We have to do those checks before we bring down the website. And then once we've done the stop, we have a job, which will, it's the same job we've been using for non-production environment. The same job, same scripts. We just said this is a production environment now. Um, that will go and bring down entire website or entire applications. Same thing, take a restore point of the database, get the release from Nexus, update the database, deploy to prod. Uh, we got two data centers there. You know, uh, FD, uh, it's called Fairham and Neos, we call it FTC and NDC. So they're two data centers. We have jobs to deploy to these data centers as well. So they are running in parallel. So they will use the same deploy apps jobs which you've seen earlier, start, and then start the environment and do a post-deployment checks as well. So this gives a clear view of what activities will happen for any ops guys. You know, they, can, they will have to just click, click, click. No more going behind and starting and stopping servers, uh, seeing the logs. Everything is possible uh, within this pipelines. So another, another pipelines we have is the rolling data center. Uh, I've just touched upon uh, the data centers. Uh, we might have a functionality where it doesn't require an outage, which is, which is, gonna hap which is happening at the moment, and there's hardly uh, outage release any, uh, at this point of time. Uh, so what we do is uh, we have a release which we think it's a, we can deploy without bringing down the website. Uh, so we say, okay, let's point to one data center. Uh, let's one data center still running. It's still the same process of uh, draining the sessions of that data center, making sure the pre-deployment activity is still happening. Uh, we still do that, prepare the release, update the application of one data center, uh, bring it back up, then switch the next data center. So it's, it's the same pipeline, but different parameters. So by achieving. So this is at, at the moment decommissioned uh, because, uh, because the next pipeline solves uh, the, the problem very easily. This is called silo deployment, uh, obviously non-outage. Uh, we got jobs which will uh, deploy to a particular silo. A silo is, uh, uh, in, in kids' terminology, is, consists of the storefront, the, the, the front-end application is just the storefront uh, and not the back office application. So they'll have multiple instances of storefront uh, to, for the scalability and availability. They have probably 20, 30, 50 servers, I don't know, uh, in, in 15 in one, one data center and 15 in another data center uh, for, for managing the, the, the loads. So we could target a bunch of silos, a bunch of either one or two silos or all of them together uh, in, in, that, uh, in, that, uh, in that job and provide uh, what silos we, we need to deploy to. So it will apply those changes into that silo, 
depending on the release, it will stop the silo, restart the silo, and it keeps on going on with, with other silos as well until the entire website is updated. So these are all the major pipelines for, for production. So in case we have an emergency fix that needs to be gone in, you know, we have found some major issue and we're losing money, we need to get a quick fix in. So we have a hotfix pipeline. A hotfix pipeline is, provides a capability to pick up small changes, which obviously has been tested in CI and other environments uh, uh, quickly, then we can just apply the patch. And we have, it could be a JSP change, it could be a class change, it could be a configuration change. Uh, depending on what change it is, we decide whether they need a restart or not. So this is why we will get a, a change quickly into the production. So this particular view highlights what we just talked about. Um, as you can see, the build pipeline, uh, where it builds, assembles, deploys to CI, tests CI, SQA, which is the sprint QA, we call it SQA. Uh, once we have a tag created, upload it to Nexus, and that release is then being used by this deployment job. So you can see these jobs use the same jobs underneath. So any changes we need to do to a job, the way it deploys, you can just change that template and it, it'll, uh, all the other jobs will, will take effect. So this gives a, a good view of, of what the internals of Jenkins we have. So this is a bigger picture of how a build pipeline looks like. You know, uh, what we've seen, you can see right from the, the code being built up to the, the promotion of that release to the production. So this is one of the view uh, which is being widely used. I just wanted to highlight that for, for production deployments, we have a separate uh, Jenkins, obviously, where it's more secure. Uh, only, only a few people are allowed to go in there. Uh, and that promote to uh, production gen, uh, job, which is on the non-production Jenkins, it just uh, informs the production Jenkins that this release is now available, so you can now deploy to the production. So the production Jenkins would, would, would know, okay, this release is now ready to go. So moving on to automated testing. Obviously, the testing is a core aspect of these pipelines. Without testing, we can't pro uh, promote a release. So we've been using fitness for a while, uh, for a long time, and fitness has been, the code has been changed thoroughly for the team to understand. The teams, uh, uh, be, depending on their skill set, they, we have eased, uh, made, made it easy for them to start using it. This is something an area is being still worked on. And what you see in the one of the pipeline, it runs the high priority tests. So the business decides which tests are high priority without which with any of those tests failing, uh, you can't make a, we cannot promote those release. So here's a look at the fitness page. We, we can see the quite a few tests. We got uh, uh, acceptance tests, we got API tests, we got UI tests. Uh, we are trying to achieve uh, the, the, the pyramid, the, the testing pyramid, where we are having more unit tests, more service tests, and less of UI tests uh, uh, to, to get a quicker feedback. So we still, this area is still being an you know, area of improvement. The way the fitness is structured in Jenkins, we got a hell lot of slaves which we use uh, to run those uh, fitness tests. Um, depending um, uh, depending on what what release we are uh, um, depending on which particular release, so you can see we have a Jenkins master, which is the same Jenkins master, orchestrating a number of scenarios uh, on various various slaves to in order to achieve uh, parallelism uh, to test parallel scenarios. Uh, this is an area which we've improved a lot. Uh, the reason we have Two years, uh, sorry, two hour window to deploy to CI is that because of, of the amount of time the fitness test takes to run all the tests because we are more of, there are lots of UI tests using Selenium and all that stuff. Uh, it takes a lot of time to get us a feedback. It, at the moment it takes one hour. So imagine uh, build, deploy, test, and release. The cycle is around one, one and a half hour. So we are, 
aiming using this framework, this architecture, we're trying to reduce that as much as possible within, within, within SLA of 30 minutes or anything less than that is going to be great. So same, same way we have implemented the fitness uh, testing as well. So we've got jobs, a wrapper job which will uh, invoke a template uh, uh, fitness job which using the fitness plugin. Uh, we, we give them uh, hosts, uh, where the host, uh, fitness host is running and what test to run. So we, got, um, we give them the path where the test is running and what port it's running. And this is, as you say, you know, we are running, as you can see, we are running the template in parallel. So we can see one fitness test in action. Uh, we have uh, a CR, or this is a customer release test wrapper, which wraps uh, a number of applications or a number of scenarios. And we can scale this up. We can add more slaves, you know, we can add more jobs to reduce the time it takes to finish those tests. At the end of this test, we get a report of all the scenarios that's been uh, being tested, and obviously the the, tray, the build is decided based on this, uh, this framework, this, this the result, the results that come out of this reports. So that covers the testing bit. Uh, we've covered the build, we covered uh, the deployment, we covered the testing, we covered the environment configuration, all the all the principles for CD, and we, we kind of, you know, try to implement that. We've, we've got a great, I uh, would like to say, it's been inspired from the, the CD book from, from Dave, um, Jez Humble and Dave Ferry. So it's a very uh, good book if, 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 if anyone wants to do CD and, and wants to read that book, it, it, it really inspires a lot. And we've, we've taken up those uh, principles from that book and, and actually implemented that. So, we got this, quite a few projects running, um, kind of sharing the environments and all that. Uh, we had to come across uh, uh, a present, a branching strategy where we can still keep the quality in and build, uh, allow the developers to check in the code uh, where, and, 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 and make sure they haven't broken the code yet. So, we, we are following the GitFlow Git flow, uh, 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 from the Git, so we we have a master branch, which is the production branch, and we make sure that uh, the production branch is maintained there. We have a developer branch where uh, people, uh, the developers, continue working, and we have you can see uh, it's it's a pipeline is used for to build that branch, uh, and you can see we have other environments it goes through. It highlights which environment that branch gets propagated, and uh, once we tag a release. Uh, it, it, it gets tagged into Git, and if that tag, if that release is suitable to go to production, uh, we kind of take a branch out of it and make any smaller changes if, if, if business wants, uh, if there's a defect in that branch, and we can't get a new release from the dev master, uh, from the developer branch, you don't want to get any new changes because we've already taken a branch, we've already taken a release that's good to go to live, and you want all well, these well, little changes which we need to be applied for defect fixes or, or, or some integration issue or some UI issue, you just want a tiny little bit of fix you want to do, can, they can do it on this branch. We have a pipeline to kind of build that as well. It's the same pipeline, same deployment jobs, same infrastructure behind it, but just a different environment, a path to, path to production environment. So once they, you can see any changes in there, we drop it back into the uh, main branch. Any changes from here, we can cherry pick into that branch. And voila, we, we can create a release and, and when production date arrives, we deploy it uh, and that gets merged back to the master. So we've got areas of improvement, obviously, plenty of areas, uh, automation testing, unit testing, uh, fitness on VM. We want the developers to run the fitness on the virtual machines before they check in the code, they do that, but due to the time constraints, they might, uh, they might not do that. Uh, we still need to work on getting the higher environments in a place we can automatically, automatically create those environments, which is a key to uh, continuous delivery. More 
automation. More, the more you automate, the more closer you'll be to CD. So that's where we are with our uh, continuous delivery framework. Uh, wanna, I just want to go through uh, the future goals, uh, which I just touched upon is the infrastructure. But what we have done, uh, a proof of concept is to have a job. We got the build pipelines, we got the releases in Nexus, we got everything. Now can we deploy to cloud? Uh, we don't want to be you know, wasting time in creating environments. So let's see if we can do that. So we did is we had a slave, which is kind of uh, pointing to a cloud, uh, which will just take the release and put it in the cloud. So we kind of, the, the proof of concept, we're doing that now moment, and if that's successful, Obviously, there's a, a new, you know, world ahead of us, uh, you know, to get infrastructure uh, into CD as well. So this framework enabled us um, to have a seamless deployments to production, less stressful uh, because everything is maintained in Jenkins. Every, every moving parts is checked in, and there's a very few things which are uh, manual, but that's still manageable. Uh, because of that, we have been able to, this is one of the pictures we've taken, one of our deployments, and we're just relaxing there and seeing the Jenkins do the job. You can see the logs uh, and keep an eye on it. No more malign intervention. We just say, okay, deploy to production and go back, sit in the chair and keep watching. And it's been one of the best deployments so far. So obviously we want to keep that pace. We want to still have a stressful deployment. Having a job running more than 30,000 times, you know, obviously, you know, can't get any better. So that, leaving this uh, picture in mind, uh, that ends my talk and open for any questions. What about uh, Subversion or Team Foundation service? Yeah, all the plugins are available. Uh, you, you could, there's a TFS plugin, there's a Subversion plugin, uh, there's a Git plugin. We can implement that, uh, the, Jenkins provides that. Yes, but I've seen only timer options, timer triggers. Yeah, there's a there's a cron yeah timer. There's a uh, there's a schedule the polling. Okay, and the uh, poll source code management. That yes, means we, uh, that. Yeah, I, I understand where you're coming from. So you wanted the Git to inform Jenkins. Yes. And yeah, Jenkins yeah. We, we still have that. Yeah, we, we do have that, but that gives us a challenge where we have to open up networks to the Git from our internal network. So that's, that's another challenge we have to address that. We, we, the kits has got a very secure policy of you know, not having dev environments open to internet uh, the other way. So we just have the production environments uh, uh, open for the website and all that. For dev environment, we can't, from the network, we can't go, from the internet, we can't go into the dev environment. So we, you know, to implement that, we need to open up the connection between Git and, and our environments to, to, to hook that change in. Okay, so hooks, that's the answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank Absolutely. you very much. Absolutely. Hi. Yeah, yeah. Not sure. Oh. Hi. Um, you mentioned before your releases were around about four gig in size. Did you find there was a bottleneck transferring that much data around your network? Well, yeah, we did. We, we, we have a lot of cleanup jobs behind the scene. So we... we before we get to the block uh, uh, or the contention area, we, we, we keep cleaning all, all releases. So we don't, uh, it's all internal networks, so we don't put it over the, over the cloud. Uh, so all internal networks, we don't have the issue of storage or network. So we, we do have storage, storage issue, which we constantly go and clean up all releases. We have jobs for the, doing that as well. So it, it's like a, a well ecosystem which, which takes care of uh, itself. Uh, we have jobs which keeps looking at the sizes and, and, and goes back in date of time and, and get rid of old releases which are not required anymore. How long is a piece of string? Is that the question? <laughs> it's, it's, it's an iterative process. It's a long iterative process. It's not a, a CD solution. I can't propose, okay, take the CD solution and you can implement it tomorrow. It's, it's all... Uh, and it's, it's was right from the inception. That's where I started, right from the developer's uh, tester's mindset. You know, if I write a code, I need to be able to deliver it. I need to be thinking how my code is going to work in production. 
So it's, it's, we are providing a framework for that. Uh, we've provided a tool. Jenkins is, is awesome. It, it, it's, it's provided that framework you know, to where a developer can see the change through and make the release available. So it, it took us about uh, a year or two to, to get where we are at the moment. Provisioning. Yeah, that's one, uh, that's, that's one uh, area, still area of improvement. Uh, so we still have a, probably a three weeks or two weeks uh, lag of getting an environment. So if you need to get an environment, there's a separate flow, separate process. No, we kept it simple. We were using uh, shell scripts. So we use simple shell scripts. We just copying, starting. Yeah, all shell scripts. So the, the guys were comfortable with it. So it's, it's, we could have chosen a puppet or chef, but it's additional learning curve. So we had a team who, who are well uh, you know, aware of shell scripts and they can uh, be a part of this uh, CD uh, pipeline. So they, we gave them uh, be part of the work. So it was great uh, to see them uh, be a part of it. They're, they're so happy to see <laughs> their contribution as well. So it's, as, it's, it's a teamwork. Every, every moving bit, you know, there's a, a bit of contribution from everyone. It's just not one DevSop team. It's every project's uh, um, responsibility. Can I answer the question? So um, I'll be available um, after this. So thank you very much. Uh, I'll take your question after this yeah thank you very much uh, for